or let's put it this way. If your mom could be here today and you could say, Mom, I love you because, what would you say? Yeah, I'm going to go off camera here, that's okay. So I don't have a family like this. Um, they didn't want to keep the gospel from my family. Um, but my mother, who um, was baptized in Taiwan, um, when she came to America, she took us, my brother and I, to vacation Bible schools and things like that. So we heard the Bible at a young age. So I thank my mother for that. Praise the Lord. That's cool. Yeah. After my mom received the Lord, she always smiled. Oh. Amen. That love just pours out of you when you're full, full of God. Anybody else want to say something nice about your mom? I'm so thankful for my mother who, uh, when my father died when I was a child, that she just trusted the Lord to raise five children on her own and she was so devoted and dedicated to us and to the Lord and raised us in the Lord. Honestly, I, I, have you ever tried to raise children by yourself? Guys, have you ever watched uh, a bunch of kids by yourself for more than a couple hours? Oh my gosh, five kids by yourself. Huh. I tell you, women, women are something else. Moms are something else. Um, I want to thank my mom for uh, how it's amazing to think about her the most. Um, whenever I mess up, it's never too big a deal for my mom. She's always so lovely. That's a mom. That's a mom. All right, well, that's, that's pretty, rep All right, one more. pretty representative. Yeah, I thank my mom for the strength that she showed me. She was also mother of actually six by the time she was 23. And my father was in the military, so she was alone a lot. But I remember us driving across country by ourselves. Oh, my gosh. And she's driving through to catch a plane to go to... Um, catch a plane to catch a boat to Panama. So wow. at any rate, we, she was strong and she should <laughs> Wow. wow. I tell you, super moms are, are, are real. So why do we love moms? Well, uh, I want to talk about the fact that today that God and moms are similar. God and mothers are similar. Now, I'm not trying to be uh, profane or blasphemous in any way, of course. Moms are not God, obviously. But there's something about the image of God in mothers that men generally do not share. Mothers, I mean, women in general, but mothers in particular, uh, glisten the, the glory and the image of God in a way that's unique and beautiful. That's what I want to talk about today. So the old Jewish proverb, you've probably heard it, God could not be everywhere, so he made mothers. He made mothers. <laughs> now that is blasphemous, but it's, it's cute. <laughs> the hand that rocks the cradle rules, rules the world. And for good reason, as I'll be talking about. The mother-child relationship is sacred, unique. No man has ever done what a mother does by carrying a child and then and then raising that child like that. Or maybe raised it some, but never carried a child. No two people in the world are closer than a mother and her child. Physically and usually emotionally. But physically, that that bond, sharing, you know, the nutrients, sharing the the, the one body, it's incredible. Um, Think of it. Mothers give life to a child, and the similarities between God and mothers. So God gives us life, right? And Jesus has given us eternal life, right? So mothers cooperate, co-create with God to bring forth physical life, and they do it with suffering and with the shedding of their own blood, usually. Very similar to what Jesus did. He gave his eternal life through suffering and the shedding of his blood. That's unique to a mom, I think. Uh, this is something the Lord gave me yesterday. I thought it was pretty cool. When a child is inside of a Christian mother, you have a trinity of persons in that body. Wow. You have the mother, you have the child, and you have God. A trinity of persons in one body. I think it's cool. Yeah. Pretty unique. Men can't do that. 
<laughs> um, so mothers are a lot like the Holy Spirit, actually, if you want to segment uh, the Trinity off to the Holy Spirit here for a moment. Yet at the beginning of time, you have the Holy Spirit brooding over the waters, you know, in creation, like moms, like brooding over their children, you know, and brooding over their pregnancy, um, nurturing it inside of them. Um, you have the Holy Spirit later on praying with groanings to deep for words. You know, there's a, it reminds me almost of a mom giving birth. Usually they make some noises. And, and usually it's of a groaning nature, you know. You, you women know what I mean. So there's kind of a, as they're giving birth new life uh, to, to their child, it's like the Holy Spirit praying and giving new life to, as it groans over us like that. Of course, uh, the Holy Spirit lives inside of us constantly. And the child, uh, and of course, lives inside the mom for nine months or so. Uh, there's that constant connection. Again, it's the similarities between mothers and God. But really, uh, when I think about moms and God, the closest thing that I can think of to the love of God being demonstrated here on earth is what I see in mothers caring for their children. Think about how mothers care for their children. Uh, it, it, it's mind-boggling to me. As a man, it's mind-boggling. I could not do it. Could you? Could you get up every morning, from the time you get up in the morning to the time you go to bed at night with small children, your whole world revolves around that little kid, that little baby, that little toddler, that little preschool. Your whole world revolves around them. You're thinking, talking, cleaning, feeding, uh, running after, uh, uh, teaching, playing with, for how, for how long? Years. <laughs> years and this is a child who doesn't always respect you this is a child who doesn't always obey this is a child who makes messes who breaks things some things that you really value and you're caring and loving and tending and nurturing and protecting and defending and cleaning up and patching up and I mean it's the amount of detail and the intensity and the duration of all of that just blows my mind I don't who would do that if moms didn't do that men would have a hard time doing that. I think moms are uniquely equipped by God to do that. And I think it's one of the reasons that moms should be honored because they demonstrate the kind of love that God has for us. How does God love you? Every bit of that and more. Constantly, intimately, he knows every, he, he's counted the hairs on your head. He knows every thought before you thunk it. You know, it says in Psalm 139. He's with you always. You can't get away from him, just like a mom. He always knows where you're at. Got eyes in the back of his head, right? Right? Like just like moms. He knows everything about you, even when you don't think he does. Just like a mom. He loves you even when you're bad, just like a mom. He forgives you and forgives you, just like you said, just like a mom. He he always sees you as you're going to be later on, not just as the mess you are now. And, and he's willing to suffer for you and bleed for you, just like a mom. I mean, there is no, to me, more graphic, tangible picture of the love of God than what I see in mothers caring, especially for small children. And when the children get older, of course, they can do more on their own. They, they, don't, they don't want as much attention from mom and all that. I get that. But small children moms, to me, is like a demonstration of what God is like with us and I just I think it's beautiful so that's why we should honor moms now let me talk about the, the flip side of the coin God has invested his character and his personality so much in moms that if you don't honor your moms you are in trouble with God I don't want to hit this too hard but it's very clear in the scriptures and it comes I think out of this principle that's um, Communicated in Proverbs 17:30, it says, "Evil will never leave the house of the one who pays back evil for good." If you pay back your mom evil for all that she's done for you, the Bible says, "Evil will never leave your house." You'll pay a penalty, and that's a general principle. But it's said very specifically in the Bible in Exodus 21, verses 17, 15, and 17. And um, listen up, teenagers. 
And he who strikes his father or his mother shall surely be put to death. <laughs> and he who curses his father or mother shall surely be put to death. That's you may give audible thanks now for the New Testament. Uh -huh. All you, all you yeah. kids. <laughs> that doesn't apply anymore. Nobody's going to throw a stone at you. But look how strongly. It, notice that in the Old Testament it didn't say if you smart off to the high priest, you get put to death. Or if you smart off to the king. You don't get, no, no. Even people with high authority and high importance, uh, you you can get surly with them, and you might you know get a verbal rebuke, but there's no command to, to die. But God so determined um, to protect moms and dads that He's made this huge penalty in the Old Testament. Mistreatment of a father and mother through striking or cursing in the Old Testament was tantamount to murder, and the penalty was the same. That ought to say something. If, you know, this is in the Ten Commandments, this command, honor your father and your mother. All right? So it's a very important command. And it's not and it's not based upon the performance of the father and mother. That's the, they, it doesn't mean if you have a good father and mother, you have to honor them. He just says, if you have a father and mother, which you all do, you must honor them. You may not curse them. You may not strike them. All right, so, well, that's Old Testament, Bob. You know, we don't pay attention to that. Well, here is the New Testament. <laughs> 2 Timothy 3, 1 to 5. I had not seen this verse until, this phrase, until I just was doing the research. So, Paul is writing to his uh, spiritual son, Timothy, who's now a pastor, and he's saying in 2 Timothy 3, 1 to 5, in the last days, things are really going to go sideways, and all kinds of people are going to go in the church are not going to be acting like Christians. So be, be on the lookout for these people. People will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having the appearance of godliness but denying its power. So those are the people, and it says, Avoid such people. Right in the middle of that list is a phrase I had not seen before. Disobedient to their parents. Right in the middle of that list of people that Christians should avoid are, is this phrase, Christians who are disobedient to their parents, just don't get too close to them. Maybe you'll catch what they have. Um, this is talking about Christians. It's not talking about non-Christians. Romans makes it very clear that we have to relate to the world, and the world's a mess because, well, they're so unsaved. They don't have the Holy Spirit. So murderers, rapists, thieves, slanderers, whatever, if they're not Christians, you've got to love them, and you've got to uh, connect with them. You have to love your neighbor, actually. But if you're in the church and you're acting this way, the Bible says, wait a minute, either, you know, the... Matthew 18 has a levels of uh, correction, one-on-one, -on -one, two on one, take it to the church. If somebody's doing this kind of stuff and they say, well, I like what I'm doing, I'm not going to change my behavior. And I'm, no, I'm not going to honor my father or mother. I think they're a bunch of blah, 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 you know, and, and um, you know, those kind of people, if they don't want to repent, it says to avoid them. So it's, it's a boundary. Do not treat your mom and dad disrespectfully. Like there are two doors here, okay? If there was a fire there and you couldn't go out that way, there's two doors to get out, which is a good thing you know. Okay, let's say out door A, there's a guy out there who he's, he's told me before the service, the first 10 people that come out of the door, I'm gonna give them $1,000 cash each. And over here in door B, I happen to know that there's a hornet's nest there and, and they're extremely angry and anybody goes out that door is gonna get stuck, okay? So you're grateful that I'm telling you about door A. You should also be grateful I'm telling you about door B. Okay, do, this, is, this is a door B. Don't be disrespectful to your parents or you'll get stung. Mm, Ephesians 6, 1 to 3 is another one of these door B uh, scriptures. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, for this is the first commandment with a promise, that it may go well with you and that you may live long in the land. So that's a promise. God's saying, look, be nice to your parents. Be kind. Treat them right. And if you do, you'll have a long life and things will go well with you. That's a door A, right? 
All right, so what if you don't do that? What if you disrespect them, you dishonor them? You're going to go through door B. You're going to lose door A. You're not going to live a long life. You're not, things aren't going to go well with you. You're going to end up stuck in door B. So God is, is it's, a, it's a double kind of thing. Do what I tell you, and I'll bless you. If you don't do what I tell you, you'll lose. And you have to obey your parents. And you have to obey your mom, who is one of your parents. <laughs> so how can we love our moms? Okay, this is where you come in. How, how, do, you, um, how do you love your moms? If they're alive or, or when they were alive, how did you show respect to your moms? I want you to respond to that. Put you on the mic here. What's one way that your mom liked to be um, treated that, that you did? Wait a minute. All right, yeah. come over there. She lives in another state, and so calling her often, and especially on the holidays, and yeah. sending cards and things. Oh, sure. yeah. Adult children, we have them. <laughs> calling home is so important. Um, taking her to doctor's appointments and spending time with her, taking her to lunch. Exactly. Yeah, quality time. Same thing, yeah. Um, staying out of trouble. <laughs> Did you hear that? <laughs> staying out of trouble. Yeah, it brings joy to a, a mother's heart to see their children doing well, which is just like God. When God sees us doing well, you know, doing the right things, he's, wow, look at my kids. You know, it just brings joy to the heart. Anybody else? How do you love your mom? Linda, you have something? Something to say. Exactly how I love my mom. I adore it. But um, I'm going to stay out. Sure. You gave a beautiful example of a child growing inside the mother. But I have, I don't know if there's any other adoptive parents here. But I want to say God could not have given us a better son. Oh, we just. I don't mean to embarrass any hates to be pointed Jason, but God just could not have given us a better son. That's oh. right. And there's a little poem for adoptive parents, and it says, if I can remember it now, I'm all nervous. And it says, um, give me a second. Uh, not, not flesh of my flesh, not bone of my bone, but still miraculously my own. Never forget for a single minute didn't grow under my heart, but you grew in it. Aww. Oh, oh man. Woo! That is awesome. Wow. That is awesome. I want to copy that. That is awesome. Amen. Thank you, Linda. And thank you, Jason, for being that kind of son. Wow, that is beautiful. See, that's what I meant about people ministering from the from the views. Yeah, really? Seriously. I mean, with that, that is awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, I know we could go on for forever and ever with this, but I'm sure you all want to go out and be nice to your mom. So, um, but I have one one little story here about how one uh, father decided to honor his wife, his mother, on Mother's Day. So he calls up um, Mother's Day was Sunday. So on Friday, he calls his daughter, uh, June, and says, "June, I hate to tell you this, but..." Your mom and I have not been getting along for a long time, and uh, I've decided to divorce your mom. And on the other hand, on the other end of the line, you can hear this, you know, like that. And and, uh, and then she says, Dad, Dad, don't do anything. I'm going to call Johnny, and we're going to come out right away. Don't call him. So they hang up, he, and she calls her brother Johnny. He says, Johnny, Johnny, Mom and Dad are playing up. We got to we got to get out there. We got to talk to him. And so uh, uh, June calls back and says, Dad, we're on the plane tonight. We'll be there. To, uh, to, uh, later tonight and then we'll we want to talk about this don't make any decisions uh, uh, you know we're, we're coming and so uh, he says well okay Jim we'll see you soon click and he turns to and says Martha yes Bill uh, the kids are coming for Mother's Day and they're paying their own way <laughs> Mother's Day, though. Well, it works for one Mother's Day, yeah. yeah. 
well, you know, they have to come up with something the next year. <laughs> I couldn't help that. Just had to one All right, so to end the service, I just want to pray uh, some prayers together with you. Uh, it's, it's been a very tender time, a very uh, beautiful time already. Um, but I'm, let's be realistic. Some people didn't have a good experience with their mom for whatever reason. I totally get that. So I, I'd like to just take a moment and just tell, before we tell God, we love our moms and we forgive her for just maybe one or two things, okay? And uh, just to, and if you want to say more than that, you can. But I think it's important to be authentic and, and celebrate our moms to say we forgive. Um, all right, let's do that. So Lord, we, we do love our moms and thank you for giving us the mom that we have. Um, both our adopted moms and our natural moms were adopted and we Lord these are the things that we maybe have, where we got sideways with mom and, and we got our feeling hurt. we just want to forgive to you Lord right now these things that where we got hurt so this is what we want to forgive in Jesus name just talk to the Lord for a few seconds there You can, can do more of this later. <clears throat> uh, secondly, I'd like to have us pray a prayers of thanksgiving and blessing for our moms. Again, just silently to the Lord. These are specific things, Lord, that we want to. I want to thank you for uh, because of my mom, for who she is and what she did. Lastly, um, for those of us who have our moms alive, let's pray uh, a prayer of intercession for something that they need, that they would like, um, for health or finances or friends or whatever it might be for comfort. And those of us whose moms are not alive, like me, um, let's just pray that we can honor, ask God to help us honor the memory of our moms in some appropriate way that would... <clears throat> that other people would know that we honor our moms. Something like that. Thanks. One thought came to me there as we were praying. Um, if you don't have a picture of you and your mom, uh, or of your mom, on your wall somewhere in your house, I suggest you might want to consider that. Uh, especially if your mom is not alive, it's a way to honor her. Just to have a picture, a good picture of her, and you if possible, on the wall somewhere in the house. Um, sometimes we forget, we just take it for granted. But I think that's a that's an easy and very visible way 
just, just to, to remind us to say, Lord, thank you for my mom. She's in heaven. She's having a great time. Give her a hug for me. But thank you for my mom, something like that. Um, and uh, that'll be it. All right, so we're going to go to cake and, ce and uh, celebrate all of this. Uh, thank you for being um, part of the service. Oh, and uh, Kevin and Amanda have some flowers to give out to the moms. And then we have um, just a little carnation. And, and if you're, we have any left over, then we'll give them out. So raise your hand for your mom and you'll get a flower. And we'll give the rest out to the ladies of the church. Thank you. There you go. Yeah. You know, I think men, God made men strong to protect the weak, to protect women and children in the week. We have 50% more muscle mass, and we're given authority as heads of households and other, other kinds of authority. That strength is there to protect women and, and the weak. Not that all women are weak or stuff like that, but I, but I just think uh, the world has turned that on its head where men use their strength to take advantage of women. And we as Christians should go out of our way to protect women of, in every, Emotionally, physically, spiritually, we should be protectors, and uh, because they're like this flower, they're they're beautiful, but they're a little more fragile in some ways. Emotionally, they can be damaged uh, more easily than, than uh, men. Men are men are like a Ford truck. Women are more like fine china in, in a lot of ways. And, uh, when, when the scripture says, "Wives, submit yourselves to your husbands," it means to come under his protection. Yeah, that's right. Come under his protection. <coughs> Submit yourself to the husband. Come under his protection. So, um, women are amazing. They're a lot smarter than men many times. They have more gifts, spiritual gifts, than men many times. But I'm just saying, men, use your authority and use your strength to protect women. And God will bless you for that. So, let's pray to end the service. Lord, thank you for this time. Uh, this has a, been a very tender, precious time. And thank you for giving us moms. Thank you that you're a father and you have a mother's heart. That men, male and female is totally uh, comes from you and all the beauty and the tenacity of, uh, of love and the, uh, the, the surrender of life, even through pain and suffering that we see in moms, Lord, it's all just a reflection of your greater love uh, coming through them to us. We bless you and thank you for sending Jesus who gave his life for us, who nurtured us so that we could be born again after we were born by our mothers. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, go enjoy some cake. Thank you all for coming. Have a wonderful Mother's Day. And uh, see you next week.